This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. Good evening. Nelson Mandela got a rousing welcome from the city of New York today as he began a 10-day tour across the United States. The former longtime political prisoner will address Congress and the United Nations and he'll be received at the White House. This is the high point of Mandela's world trip seeking money and political support for the fight against apartheid in South Africa. <laughs> With a mixture of triumph and humility, Mandela arrived at John F. Kennedy Airport. To be greeted by hugs and handshakes and promises of help. We must continue the use of sanctions and every other reasonable and effective device we can find until apartheid is only a terrible memory. Mandela was pleased, urging the leaders to keep up sanctions against South Africa and bringing a message of hope Today, we can say to con with confidence that we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> On the drive through one of the poorest sections of Brooklyn and later at a high school, it was clear that Mandela is a hero to millions in America, too. And it was clear that he was having a good time. But that was nothing compared to the throngs of people who waited hours in the financial district for the traditional welcome New York gives heroes, a ticker tape parade. The first since the Mets won the World Series in 1986. Security for the visit is intense. The New York Police Department built a special Mandela mobile bullet and rocket resistant. 12,000 police were on duty at a cost of $2 million in overtime, the tab picked up by the U.S. State Department. At New York City Hall, Mandela received the key to the city and gave a promise. Apartheid is doomed. <laughs> South Africa shall be free. For many of the tens of thousands who came out to see Mandela today, it was a long-awaited, deeply emotional moment. Harold Dow has the story of some who were faces in the crowd. You see Mandela, huh? There was joy in the Joseph household this morning. You excited? To see him up close, to, uh, to be able to feel his presence, his aura, uh, will be a dream come true for me. OK, let's go, OK? I feel that I know him. I, I, I know that I love him. For Jamal and Joyce Joseph, the visit of Nelson Mandela to the United States was a moment in history they wanted their sons to see. It's important for them to see a, uh, a living legend. It's important for them to see them, to know that I saw this man, this great man, this hero. Cheetah and Simon Hasten, brother and sister who were born in South Africa, are also eager to see Nelson Mandela. To them, he represents the future of the country they left behind 15 years ago. It's the first time in, well, in all the time that I've been in America that I've actually just felt wonderfully proud of, uh, of a South African. I regard it as um, almost a miracle that a person of his kind has arrived on the scene and made it possible for the two sides to talk to each other. Two families, each waiting to get a glimpse of the man who has profoundly touched their lives in different ways. What Nelson had gone through um, gave me strength each and every day. Jamal Joseph was first arrested at age 15. He later served almost six years in Fort Leavenworth prison for harboring a fugitive for what he says were his political activities as a Black Panther. He identifies with Nelson Mandela. That Nelson Mandela would come here shows that there is a connection and that there is one struggle. What we're talking about is a global struggle for human rights and equality. Joyce Joseph had a bright future as a model, but she gave it all up to keep the family together while her husband was in prison. The Josephs named their second son, Jad Mandela. We feel like Nelson Mandela is, uh, is an elder in our family. Uh, we feel like he's our father or our grandfather. 
You want to stand up? Maybe. It's a great day for South Africans. Um, Nelson Mandela's uh, being out in the world and, and being seen for what he is. The Hastens never could accept the system of apartheid in South Africa. For them, Nelson Mandela represents a new beginning. I think all over South Africans are just galvanized by the sense that there's hope again. If you could speak to Nelson Mandela, what would you say? Please take care of your health because we're going to need you around for a long, long time. Thank you for surviving, for being here, and for caring enough to come to be close to us. I just pray that my sons grow up to be like you. Harold Dow, CBS News, New York. His aides say Nelson Mandela is a tired man on the last leg of his world tour, but once the dancers got started day here in New York, Mandela brightened right up Harold Dow, has our report. Nelson Mandela went to church today. More than 3,000 religious leaders from across the United States came here to pay tribute to a man they've prayed for and a cause they've supported for decades. And pay tribute they did. Oh, come, let us worship. We pray for South Africa. Free at last. Let us sing a new song. Because of Mandela's travels to seven countries in 16 days, tour organizers are making schedule changes to ensure that the 71-year-old ANC leader gets enough rest. He waited for an hour before he was called upon to speak. We have run and not grown weary. We have walked and not fainted. And finally, our destination is in sight. But the sight of all those church folks doing the toy toy, Africa's freedom dance in the aisles, clearly energized Mandela. A mile away in Harlem, they were washing the streets. Nelson Mandela's visit to the capital of black America has a special symbolic meaning here. It, it means uh, togetherness for all people of color. I feel with them that they are my royal family. They are my cane and cream. Are you on the list to come yeah. inside? Okay. Ahmed Obafemi and his family have volunteered to help with security during Mandela's visit to Harlem. For them, just seeing Mandela in their community more than justifies their years of political activism. What's up? What's up? His release was a victory not only in South Africa, but here because so many people have struggled to see that day come true when, he's, when he was out. Okay, so you're not going to be working security. You're going to be dealing Well, it's actually one struggle, different fronts, because we're fighting the same struggle. As Harlem gathers for the arrival of Nelson Mandela, the festive atmosphere is building. When they do make their appearance, that's when the real celebration will begin. Harold Dow, CBS News, New York. Nelson Mandela went to the United Nations today to thank the world body for its efforts against apartheid in South Africa. Mandela called the system of white minority domination a, quote, indelible blight on human history. It will forever remain an accusation and a challenge to all men and women of conscience that it took as long as it has before all of us stood up to say, enough is enough. Mandela again today underscored his solidarity with what he calls other liberation movements, including the Palestine Liberation Organization. Under some close questioning here in the U.S., Mandela has stuck by his support for the PLO's Yasser Arafat, as well as Cuba's Fidel Castro and Libya's Muammar Gaddafi. Mandela saying, and I quote, our attitude is based solely on the fact that they fully support the anti-apartheid struggle, unquote. U.S. officials said today they do not expect this to be a major issue when Mandela meets next week with President Bush. After his triumphant New York visit, Nelson Mandela made his second U.S. stop today, this one in Boston. His welcome there is warm as it was in New York. 
Harold Dow reports. It was an outpouring of love and another strong showing of support for Nelson Mandela at a high school in Boston's Roxbury community where almost half the students drop out before graduating, Mandela repeated a message he delivers to the youth of South Africa's townships. Because education is the most powerful weapon which we can use in order to prepare our youth for their role as leaders of tomorrow. At the John F. Kennedy Library, the Kennedy family paid tribute to Nelson Mandela by hosting a luncheon and ceremony in his honor. The Kennedys were early supporters of the anti-apartheid movement. If President Kennedy were here and writing a new Profiles in Courage, the first chapter would be on Nelson Mandela. We are fighting for the kind of freedom and democracy which is no different from that which you hold dear in this country. It's being called Mandela magic. Here in Boston, as in New York, huge crowds have turned out to see the man Senator Kennedy called the true father of South Africa. At least for today, all of Boston's racial tensions were forgotten, replaced by the joy of welcoming this soldier who has been fighting a lifelong battle for racial justice. Harold Dow, CBS News, Boston. Nelson Mandela is in Washington tonight, about to get down to the business part of his U.S. tour. On the eve of his visit to the White House, Mandela condemned the Bush administration for supporting Angolan rebel leader Jonas Savimbi, who is also backed by South Africa. Mandela spoke at a news conference limited to reporters from black-owned media. Harold Dow reports. <laughs> Because tour organizers decided Sunday would be a day of rest for Nelson Mandela, there was only a small crowd and no ceremony when the ANC leader arrived in the nation's capital. Nevertheless, Mandela pulled no punches in setting his agenda for his meeting tomorrow with President Bush. I come here to put the message that sanctions must be intensified. But selling that idea to the president will be a problem. Mr. Bush favors a partial lifting of sanctions because he feels it will encourage reform efforts in South Africa. While the negotiating process there has started, Mandela is convinced that easing sanctions now would take the pressure off the white minority government to continue its movement toward abolishing apartheid. But tour organizers believe his enthusiastic reception in this country has only strengthened his hand in talking to the president. He's the real thing. He's the real article. He is what he is. He is tough. He is gentle. He is wise. He is brave. He is generous. And people love it. And it's that love that is increasing the pressure on President Bush as he tries to walk the thin line between his desire to ease sanctions and the political need to avoid angering millions of Americans who have turned out to honor a man who has become a virtual symbol of freedom. Harold Dow, CBS News, Washington. Nelson Mandela was honored in Washington today at the White House. He urged President Bush to keep up U.S. economic sanctions against the white-ruled South African government. Another disagreement between visitor and host surfaced almost immediately and in public. More about that from White House correspondent Wyatt Andrews. Mandela's historic visit to the White House was only minutes old when the two leaders clashed over Mandela's support of violence in the fight to end apartheid. President Bush held up the example of Martin Luther King to encourage Mandela to renounce armed struggle. In the words of the great Martin Luther King, Jr., let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. Mandela answered Bush as if addressing a school boy, saying he would give the president a proper briefing to convince him the anti-apartheid movement had no choice. When a government decides to ban political organizations of the oppressed intensifies oppression and does not allow any free political activity, no matter how peaceful and nonviolent, then the people have no alternative but to resort to violence. But the issue of violence blocks what Mandela wants most from official Washington, direct foreign aid. 
10 million dollars are now set aside but only for groups that suspend violence in favor of peace talks mandela did inch closer toward meeting that condition today we made it clear that once the government removed all the obstacles to negotiation, we would consider the cessation of hostilities. Mandela also faced criticism here for last week's statement supporting the PLO, Muammar Gaddafi, and Fidel Castro, men and movements that supported him, he says, when he needed it most. Some congressmen say because of that remark, they will boycott Mandela's speech to Congress tomorrow. Nelson Mandela's appearance before this body is a national disgrace. The invitation alone heaps shame on this body. Still, Mandela left the White House today saying he was encouraged. He got from the president a promise to hold firm on the sanctions against the South African government, and Mandela assured Mr. Bush he won't press to have those sanctions increased. Wyatt Andrews, CBS News, the White House. Nelson Mandela went before a joint meeting of Congress today to give his vision of the future in South Africa. Harold Dow reports. Mr. Speaker, Nelson Mandela. The man from Africa received a thunderous reception as he made his way down the aisle. His hand seized time after time by the legislative power brokers of America. For a man who less than five months ago was in a prison cell, this was a moment to be savored. For the first time on his U.S. tour, Mandela revealed his vision of a new South Africa. This complex South African society, which has known nothing but racism for three centuries, should be transformed into an oasis of good race relations where the black shall to the white his sister and brother a fellow south african mandela's answer to concerns about violence in south africa was a warning peace will not come to our country and region until the apartheid system is ended Mandela's image as a world hero could pose problems for the South African government at the negotiating table and for President F.W. de Klerk when he visits Washington later this year. Today, though, the two sides were in harmony. His purpose will be essentially the same as uh, Mr. Mandela's. That is to be able to brief American leaders and the American public firsthand on his visions for a new South Africa, which, let me assure you, will differ very, very little from Mr. Mandela's visions. Nelson Mandela leaves Washington with the promise that sanctions will be maintained, a chance that new money will be made available to the ANC, and applause ringing in his ears. Harold Dow, CBS News, Washington. Nelson Mandela went to Atlanta today to honor assassinated civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. Mandela placed a wreath at King's tomb after saying at the airport that King's philosophy of nonviolence isn't, in his opinion, always suitable for South African blacks. Accompanied by Coretta Scott King and others, Mandela then attended the civil rights tribute at nearby Big Bethel Church. Nelson Mandela asked U.S. labor unions today to keep up their support for South Africa's anti-apartheid movement. Speaking in Miami Beach, Mandela thanked a public employees union for working to stop the investment of pension funds in companies that do business in South Africa. Nearby, a group of Cuban Americans demonstrated against Mandela because Mandela had thanked Fidel Castro for his support. Later, Mandela flew on to Detroit for a fundraising rally there tonight at Tiger Stadium. Nelson Mandela is winding up his eight-city U.S. tour this weekend. He got a warm welcome today at the Los Angeles City Hall. He said his visit to the United States has been both exhausting and exhilarating. He promised to step up the fight against South African apartheid. Mandela is appearing tonight at a rally at the Los Angeles Coliseum. In a harsh attack, South Africa's defense minister accused Nelson Mandela today of reneging on promises to help foster a climate of peace back home. That came as Mandela was winding up his U.S. tour in California today. Harold Dow has that. This was the last stop in the U.S. for a triumphant Mandela. The Bay Area has been a longtime bastion of support for the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. If I feel so young, if I feel like an old battery that has been recharged, 
It is the people of the United States of America that are responsible for this. While applause was once again ringing in Nelson Mandela's ears, there was evidence today of the harsh realities that await him when he returns to South Africa. At a rally near Johannesburg to welcome ANC leader Alfred Enzo back from exile, there was more violence and death. It happened as police arrested a black youth at the rally. There was gunfire. I saw one policeman pulling out the fire. I mean, a shot went through my, my right hand, um, uh, upper arm here, yeah, through one guy's eye, and he was instantly dead. There was no provocation whatsoever. Uh, those, those guys were actually after that comrade. This is what Mandela says the struggle is all about. He's been telling audiences across the U.S. that the ANC cannot renounce its armed struggle against South Africa as long as government forces remain violent. Our people are determined to fight for liberty until victory is achieved. Nelson Mandela leaves the U.S. with his goals achieved. Sanctions against South Africa remain in place and millions of dollars have been raised so that the ANC can continue its struggle for freedom. Harold Dow, CBS News, San Francisco.